The Supreme Court is currently hearing a case about whether or not the sedative midazolam is acceptable to use when administering the death penalty. And the conservative justices basically made fools of themselves and completely missed the point of the trial. So Oklahoma Watch reports, quote, they repeatedly asked Robin Conrad, an attorney representing the inmates, whether she thought the lack of alternative ways to execute inmates was relevant in the legal challenge. John Roberts and Justice Samuel Alito noted that states have a diminishing list of drugs they can turn to for use in executions. Alito noted that is due to quote, abolitionists pressuring drug companies. It is appropriate for the judiciary to... Is it appropriate for the judiciary, judiciary to countenance what amounts to a guerrilla war against the death penalty? So, in other words, they're having a conversation about the constitutionality of my dozalam in, in, in use for doing the death penalty. And the conservative justices repeatedly keep asking, uh, asking the question, Well, we're running out of ways to kill people. Shouldn't this be considered in this? So they're more concerned about, okay, if we rule against this thing, this particular drug that's used in this new uh, death penalty cocktail, well, how else are we going to kill people? We're running out of ways. Aren't you concerned about that? Oh, wait, wait, wait. But the conservative justices are always the ones that tell us that any other considerations are irrelevant. All that matters is... Is this thing constitutional or not, according to a very strict, rigid, originalist interpretation of the Constitution? They tell us, Galia especially, tells us, that's all that matters. I don't consider any other aspect of this. I don't care about what the society today thinks about this. I don't care about other people's interpretations. I don't care about, you know, nuanced counter questions because this, is, this isn't a living document. The, the Constitution is not a living, breathing document that changes with time. It stays exactly as it is. So you put an issue in front of me and my job is to tell you, is it constitutional or not? What's going on here? But that's out the window now. Why? Because they like the death penalty. They like the death penalty, so they're like, boom. But wait, if we rule against this, how are we going to kill people? You're not supposed to care about that. You're supposed to rule on the constitutionality of the question in front of you. And I like how they keep asking that question in an I got you way. Like, well, aren't you thinking about that? That if we rule against, you know, against this drug, how are we going to kill people? And you know what's really the concern here from the people who brought the suit in front of the court? Their concern is... Dennis McGuire, Clayton Lockett, and Joe Wood. These were three people that just had botched executions, including with uh, my dozalam, my dozalam, however you pronounce it. So it's not like, you know, they, the Supreme Court justices act like, you know, there's no real question involved here. Yet there is a real question. The real question is, how can you administer this drug when we know that the, the, past few times it was used, one time the person was foaming at the fucking mouth, another time the person was alive for over 20 minutes when they were supposed to be dead, so somebody said, I feel pain as they were dying. That's the issue here. The issue is, even if you're going to kill these people and they got that punishment through our justice system, you're doing it in an unconstitutional way. The Eighth Amendment to the Constitution protects against cruel and unusual punishment. To torture somebody with the wrong drug before they die, of course that's cruel, and of course that's unusual. To say that that's not cruel and unusual, that means that you don't think anything is cruel and unusual. I gave you the wrong drug, you choked on your own saliva for a good 20 minutes, you were breathing heavily, and then you died in, in agony. Well, no, that, I don't think that violates the, the Eighth Amendment. I mean... If we rule against this drug, how are we going to continue to kill people? We have to be able to kill people. Look, man, this is why this is so frustrating. Number one, because they're ignoring the most important part of this case. But number two, a death penalty case in general that's put in front of rational people, they're going to rule against the death penalty in the United States because it is unconstitutional. I don't care what anybody says. I can read. I have eyes. I read the Constitution and I can understand the facts in the cases involving the death penalty. And to me, it's rather obvious. 
If we have a ban on cruel and unusual punishment, then of course you need to ban the death penalty, even if you like it! See, that's the thing, I'm philosophically for the death penalty. In theory, if we had access to perfect information, I would be for the death penalty. But the thing is, that's irrelevant because according to our Constitution, we have a ban on cruel and unusual punishment. Okay, so, what, you don't think the death penalty is cruel and unusual? So flip it around. What if somebody in your family committed a crime and, uh, they... they were given the death penalty? Would you think it was cruel? And, by the way, the word unusual, there's different ways to interpret that, but... the way I look at it is, a majority of the countries in the world have already banned... uh, the death penalty. So doesn't that mean, by definition, it is unusual? It is not usual? As in, it is not the norm? It's not normal? We're in the minority of that uh, debate. So isn't that unusual? Again, I certainly think it's cruel. Killing somebody, I don't know what could be more cruel than that. You'd have to change the definition of the word cruel to say it's not cruel. And it is unusual. So again, my point is, even if you're in favor of the death penalty, philosophically like I am, or even if you're in favor of it empirically, like, in this world, which I'm not, which is a different conversation, you still have to look at the Constitution and say, okay, come on, who are we fucking kidding here? But the Supreme Court, the conservatives on the court, in their infinite stupidity, they disagree that the death penalty is cruel and unusual. Again, I don't know how. And they're even missing the point in this case, where they're like, okay, our concern is that people were choking and they were in agony before they died and this drug doesn't work. And they're like, well, we'll get to that later anyway, but how are we gonna kill people if we rule against this?